the Book of Happiness. Dreams. A place where our imagination runs wild and our deepest desires become a reality. It can be a fantastical place of wonder and a utopia where all your wants are given to you and everyone is at your beck and call. Nightmares are the flip side of dreams. One forces you awake, while the other lulls you into complacency and leaves you wanting more. Nightmares and reality are often contrasted with one another. So are dreams and utopias. My experience with dreams and nightmares has taught me a lot. It also told me something that would change my life forever. I was having one of my recurring nightmares. I was being chased in a dark hallway in an asylum. I was in a straitjacket and continuously stumbling. The person chasing me was the head psychiatrist. He had a leather strap and a taser in his hand. I knew what was going to happen next. I would trip and fall on my back and try to inchworm away, but the doctor would be on top of me and smile wickedly while tasering me in the neck. But today was different. The floor in front of me dissolved into pure light. This slowly spread to my surroundings, and afterwards, instead of falling or waking up, I was left floating in the light. It felt like the few moments before waking up. Instead of waking up in my bed as usual, I wake in a meadow. It is a vast field of lush green grass, with a herd of sheep, a herd of cows, and a tribe of goats. Then my eyes find the river that surrounds the pasture. It is filled with sparkling blue waters, which have a school of glowing fish that give the pasture a fantasy vibe. Then, swimming in wonder, my gaze falls on a small mud brick hut on the bank of the river. It has a thatched roof and is surrounded by rose bushes. I knock on the door and ask, Hello? Is anyone inside? The door flings open, and on the other side is a man. He has delicate, elvish features. All of his features and attributes are precise and perfect. All but his eyes. Those amber eyes show a broken man. Someone who has seen all his loved ones die. Someone bereft of happiness. He looks at me and smiles. I'm here, inside. Welcome to the Garden of Eden. Your paradise. His tone is even and lacks any joy or interest. I am startled. The Garden of Eden? The one from... The Bible? Yes. He interrupts, waving off my surprise. You can't leave, though, until I want you to. You'll probably be here for... He counts on his fingers. All of eternity. He smiles, a perfect smile. I try to grab his collar and shake some sense into him and tell him to let me leave. He steps aside with inhuman speed and pushes me to the ground. He drags me outside and puts my back against a tree. While I struggle, he looks at me and says, Don't worry, you are in a dream. You'll wake up at the time you're supposed to wake up. Time here is a mere construct you humans created. Everything the same for all time. It's... Beautiful? 
I say, while taking in the view. A massive pain, not beautiful. I'd rather be old and aching than whatever I am now. I've never had any person come here. Cows, sure. Sheep, it's a common thing. Goats, rare, but still they do come. A human, never. So you're trapped in paradise, and you're complaining. He laughs mirthlessly. Paradise? Humans sure are a greedy bunch. All his fault, but still. Look around. Is there anyone that you see besides us? A human? I scour the expanse. No. No one besides us. I'm a person that loves activity and the bustling of a city. I love meeting new people. So this is my personal hell, if you will. I look at him, and sensation gnaws at the back of my head. Hell. Bible. Paradise. His fault. You aren't just any angel or celestial being, are you? He smiles, and a fire ignites in his eyes. Samael, Lucifer, Satan, the devil. In the flesh. He gives a theatrical bow. I am taken aback, but this seems to amuse him even more. Wondering where the demons, pits of lava, and damned are? The damned are the cattle. I feel bad while butchering them, but I gotta eat. Nothing like demons, but they're my fellow fallen angels who are now in their... Own personal hell? I ask inquisitively. He nods with grim acceptance and continues. I'm going to now tell you something, mortal. Listen carefully. My father, God, has always been a tyrant. He sent me here for creating you and making you look like angels. He then tried to destroy you, but found that without you, he won't be able to become all-powerful and all-present. He made you, my creations and my children, fear me and spite me. He made dreams to punish and keep you under his command. Your hopes, desires, and wishes are so close, but he takes them away and then forces you to play in his playground and makes you his lifeless plaything. I made nightmares to help mortals escape from his clutches. He walks toward me and says, Time for you to awake, mortal. I may see you here as cattle later, but I won't slaughter you. He smiles and almost touches my forehead. He pulls back immediately and runs to his hut. I shout after him. Don't tell me you won't let me leave. He returns with a huge leather-bound book. Here. This book is for you. It'll help you during your adventures, Harbinger. He says this with a sorrowful grin. Go forth and do your task. I am immediately encased in a cocoon of light. And awake in my bed, my alarm ringing wildly. I found the leather book on my shelf. I tried to open it, but it wouldn't. Whatever. I'll try again later, I said as I left. I am telling this to you now, reader. If you meet the devil the way I met him, either fling curses at yourself or be thankful, for you are a harbinger of worlds. I'll explain it as briefly as I can, 
for this is all I know. Harbingers are people capable of destroying worlds through the use of their leather-bound books. After destroying a world, you receive an orb of energy. This can be used in one of two ways. To either give yourself a power akin to the world you just destroyed, or to crush it and gain nothing. The final goal is to destroy all worlds but five. Heaven, Hell, Earth, Limbo, and Purgatory. As I go ahead, I shall keep telling you of all the other things I gather throughout. Be safe, fellow Harpingers. <laughs>